UCJ Conversation Series. I'm here in Melbourne with Anat Harrell, our guest. Welcome. Hello. Um, and so for those who may remember, Anat uh, did a virtual tour for us in February of last year, in 2021. But now she's here in Melbourne. Yes, so, I am. So welcome, welcome to Australia. Welcome to Melbourne to your first visit to Australia. And maybe let's begin by telling us what brings you here this time. Wow. So, um, yeah, so Australia uh, has a very close um, connection with my family. Um, should I go, how far do I go back? Can I go back to yeah, sure. Poland? Yeah, sure. Okay, so Poland, 1930, all right? My grandmother's oldest sister, who is 17 years older, um, migrates to Australia with her four children, and they move here to uh, Sydney. And so uh, that's 1930, and my family, the Kellner family, is living in Lublin, and my grandmother, who's the youngest of the family, is married to my grandfather. And for some reason, and we don't know really why, he decides Poland is not a good place anymore. So he yeah, says, foresight. yeah, yeah, I, for whatever foresight that mm. was. And he says to my grandmother, let's go and join your sister in Australia. So he leaves in 1938, early 1938, and he goes to Sydney and he starts working. He works for about a year until he makes enough money to send passage over to my grandmother and my two-year-old father. And they get on a ship that leaves Poland in May of uh, 1939, and they arrive at Sydney uh, May 31st, 1939, on the very last boat that left Poland. Were it not for that, I wouldn't even be here anymore because everyone left was, um, was, was assassinated or killed. So my, my father actually grows up in Australia. After about 10 years or so, uh, my grandma, grandpa, and my, my dad move back to Poland. They go back to Poland because what they want to do is my grandfather wants to rebuild a new Poland. Poland has just you know, started a new communist regime and he wants to help rebuild Poland after the war. Things didn't go so well. He got you know, very dissolutioned. And in the late 50s, they moved to Israel. A uh, good thing because that's where my dad met my mother and they got married and I was born in the early 60s. We spent some time in Tanzania because my dad was a fluent English speaker having grown up here in, in Australia. And then we ended up going to Peru. So I grew up in Peru from 1970 to 1980. After that, I went back to Israel, ended up in the U.S. for many years and eventually ended up back in Israel. It's a whole story. But why am I here today? Because three years ago, my brother and sister and I took my, uh, my brother, my father and my mother were living in California and we sat them down at the dining room table and he said, and we said, guys, I live in Israel. My sister lives in LA and my brother lives in San Jose, California. What are we going to do if something happens to you? We need to know now because we're so spread out. If something happens, we need, we need to be, you know, be, know what to do. And so my mother says, no, I don't want to talk about those things. I don't want to talk. It's so depressing. And I said, okay. And my dad says, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to be cremated. To which my mother went, oh, because it's very uncommon. You know, in Judaism, it's not so acceptable. And my some, dad, somewhat controversial even. Well, yes, but my father was very anti-religious. He wanted to be cremated. He said, okay, you want to be cremated. What, is, do, what do you want us to do with your, you know, with your ashes? He said, I don't know. And I said, do you want us to spread them somewhere? He says, yes. Spread me on the Pacific Ocean. Great. And then we talked to my mom, and my mom said, no, I don't want that. I want to be buried next to my parents and so forth. Four months after that conversation, my mother went to sleep and did not wake up in the morning. Wow. And we know exactly what she wanted to do, which is, it, this is one of the conversation. It's the most important conversation that people don't have with their family uh, members. You very know? true. Because, you know, I don't want to talk about it, whatever. We knew what to do. So my mother passed away, my father moved in with my sister, and lasted for another two and a half years, until today is May 8th, exactly three months ago, on February 8th, he went to sleep and did not wake up in the morning. He passed wow. away three months ago today. Wow. But because we knew exactly what he wanted to do, um, um, he, you know, we had his body cremated, and then my sister, my brother, and I sat down and we said, okay, now what do we do? We decided that in October, because my sister's daughter has a bat mitzvah, we would spread his ashes in California on the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. And then my brother says, what if we took some part of dad 
and took him back to Peru and spread his ashes on El Silencio Beach because that was his favorite place where we grew up as kids. Mm -hmm. And we thought, wow, that's an incredible idea. So yes, we'll do that. And then I said, we were talking about going back to Israel because we have to fly back. And then my sister says, but wait, you don't have to fly back through Europe. You can fly back the other way around because you're already halfway around mm -hmm. the world. And I said, oh my gosh, I can fly back through Australia. And that's when I realized that I am going to take another part of my dad's ashes back to Australia because my dad, as I said, mm. grew up here, right? And he, he, they lived in Wollongong and they lived in Sydney on Bondi Beach. And mm. he kept, he told me stories about and, growing and you've up. you've never been here before. I have never been in Australia. Remember that older sister of my grandmother? Mm. She she married yeah uh, she was married and they have a whole I have a whole empire of cousins here second cousins. In fact, we're at your cousin's house right now. I we are in fact in in Andrea's uh, uh, apartment. Yes, I have second cousins and second cousins once removed, and my kids have third cousins. Mm. I have a whole family here in Australia. Mm. I've met some of them around the world, but never been here. Right. So it's been a dream, and I look at this as the gifts that I have received after my dad's passing. Mm. This, there, so I, we, we met last week, we were in Peru. My brother, my sister and I went to the beach and we did a little ceremony for my dad mm. and we scattered his, his, his ashes on his favorite beach. And then I'm in Melbourne right now, meeting up with my cousins. And on Tuesday, um, um, and, uh, Abigail, um, Andrea and I are going to Sydney and we are going to scatter his ashes uh, on Bondi Beach mm -hmm. and in Wollongong, we'll figure out a way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I am on a mission. It's got it's like a mitzvah mission. Yeah, know? like honoring your father honoring, in, a, in, a, in a true sense. honoring my father's wishes. Mm -hmm. And I know that he's somewhere up there smiling down because it's the Pacific Ocean, but in mm -hmm. three different places mm -hmm. where he grew up, where we grew up, and mm -hmm. yeah, so, so it's, it's a very, a very it's an, in a sense, it's an emotional homecoming, even though you've never been here It's before. a journey of the heart, mm -hmm. you know? It's a really emotional journey. I'm carrying my dad with me in the backpack, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not going to put him in the luggage, right, you know? Right. But, but yeah, so it's like carrying him to the places that he loved, and mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what I'm doing here. Well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, that was just the, the introductory, uh, the introduction as to why you're here. Yes. But what I really want to talk about is you live in a very interesting and fascinating part of the world in the Galilee, in northern Israel. Yes. Um, and I wonder if you can tell me a little about your region and your the communities that live there. I know it's a very diverse part of the world. It is. So specifically for our Christian and Jewish audience, maybe tell us about some of the communities in your neighborhood. Well, those um, in the audience who are Christians, you will definitely identify the Galilee as the place where Jesus grew up for mm. the first 30 years of his life. Mm. And um, yeah, so it's... Uh, it's, it's an, an incredible place. I'm a tour guide, mm -hmm. and I live in a kibbutz in the Lower Galilee called Hanaton. And my backyard is the amazing region, geographical region of the Galilee. Mm -hmm. And what we have in the Galilee is an incredible human mosaic of all kinds of peoples. Um, the Galilee is 50% of us in the Galilee are Jewish citizens of Israel, and 50% of us in the Galilee are Arab citizens of Israel. Mm -hmm. Which and, is not Muslims. Uh, no, no, they're Arabs. Right. Now, Arab means that they speak Arabic mm -hmm. as a mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Under the umbrella of the word Arab, okay, you've got Arab Druze, mm -hmm. which is a different religion. You've got Arab Christians, mm -hmm. which is a different religion. Mm -hmm. You've got Arab Muslims. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Arab Bedouins, who mm -hmm. are Muslims, but they lead a different kinds of lifestyle. So there's four groups that an Arab citizen of Israel falls under, mm -hmm. which, you know, whichever one. Mm -hmm. And we all live in the Galilee, 50-50, you know, and we live in an incredible shared living and a coexistence that is unequaled anywhere in the world. I mean, where in the world do all of these diff different kinds of peoples live together? Really, um, we really live very, very well. Is mm -hmm. it excellent and, and perfect? No, mm -hmm. but it's very, very good. And we try really hard because we're all citizens of Israel mm -hmm. to, to, to work for the benefit of everybody. Mm. And um, because we have a Christian and a, and a Jewish audience, one of the most amazing things that you can see when you come to the Galilee, 
are those very places where Jesus grew up. They were Jewish places, mm -hmm. right? Jewish places where he grew up because Jesus was Jewish, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of those places where, where show his Jewish life, for example, there are some amazing synagogues. Mm -hmm. okay, for example, Capernaum. Mm -hmm. Capernaum is a definite uh, uh, um, pilgrimage a pilgrimage destination mm -hmm. on the Christian pilgrimage of the Holy Land. But Capernaum, what you see are synagogues. It's a synagogue where Jesus may have um, uh, may have preached or may have uh, prayed or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So there's an ancient synagogue there. Um, and then there are other places that are only Christian because of the different miracles that, 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 um, that Jesus did around the Sea of Galilee. But one of the most fascinating places in the Galilee today is a place that was only discovered in 2008 or 2009. It's called Magdala. Okay. Mm. And Magdala is a, um, uh, they, they were building a hotel there. Uh, mm. The, the, the uh, Legionnaires of Christ, a Catholic group from Mexico, mm. was building a hotel. And as they were excavating, as it happens so often in Israel, they found amazing archaeology. Mm -hmm. And what they discovered was a synagogue from the very first century, the first half of the first century of the, of, of the, uh, of the millennium. Mm -hmm. So from 2,000 years ago, a synagogue. And if you're thinking about the story of Jesus and he living just the two kilometers, three kilometers from there, mm -hmm. it is very traditional in the Jewish, in Jewish life to visit friends on the Sabbath, on mm -hmm. Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And this is, it was a, a, a little village called Magdal or Migdal in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And if you, that word may remind you of a certain very good friend of Jesus by the name of Miriam of Migdal. And if you turn it to English, it's Mary Magdalene, right? Mm -hmm. He must have visited her or some of his friends that lived in that very village. It was a fisherman's village. And there is the synagogue of the village that was there at the time that he may have visited so it is so it's it, it's it gets you goosebumps because Absolutely. you look at look at this remains of this the synagogue and i can tell you you know the odds of jesus maybe have been have, have that maybe sat on one of these benches in the synagogue there's a good possibility mm -hmm. that it could have happened and so it's a synagogue that he could have been in and it, it's an incredible incredible place where you can take both christian and Jewish tradition and blend them and see that at one time we were one mm. you know um, and it's very very emotional for both Christians and uh, Jews I'm sure there's plenty of other examples like that I, the last time I was in Israel was actually on an interfaith tour but yes. we concentrated our time in the Jerusalem region yes. most people uh, I suspect do that and probably don't travel up to your region is there any anything else you can tell us about what would be a great place to visit maybe on an interfaith tour or for Christians and Jews as well? Well, Jerusalem is Jerusalem. Everyone knows about uh, Jerusalem. Especially right? since you're a tour guide. And you're right, I am, right. So Jerusalem is amazing, but you need to realize that Jesus only spent short periods of time in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The most important one, of course, was the last week of his life. Mm -hmm. But all the rest of the time of his life, he was in the Galilee. He was born in Bethlehem. But very quickly, they went to the Galilee. So Nazareth mm -hmm. is an incredible, a very emotional place to, to, to visit. All of the places around the Sea of Galilee where he performed, where he began working, his, you know, where he began preaching. And, and so all of those places. Now another place, uh, really interesting places to visit, is the places where Christians live today mm. in the Galilee. Mm. Because in the Galilee, we have... Um, in, in Israel, we have about 130 to 140,000 Arab Christians, citizens of Israel. Mm -hmm. For example, there are two uh, towns in the north, in the, in the Galilee, that are 100% Christians. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they are in the, in the upper Galilee. Those are wonderful places to visit. To visit the different churches. You've got Greek Orthodox. You've got um, Melkite Orthodox. You've got Catholics. You've got... Protestant, all kinds of different places. And I assume they're all open to visit for tourists for yourself. Oh, of course, mm. especially after two years of mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, of course. And you can visit all of them. You can visit churches. You can meet with people. Mm -hmm. You can meet with with um, with uh, uh, clergy. You can mm -hmm. meet with, yeah, and... As we did on your virtual tour. As you did on my virtual tour. You can even go to wineries that mm. are run by Christian mm -hmm. families. And, oh, there are so many things to do for interfaith tours 
um, to do both sides. They're very, it's a very interesting place, the gallery. Mm. And just to finish up, yes. um, you're about to go back to Israel, I assume, soon. Yes. Um, can you tell us something positive? Because we often hear stories that are not always positive about Israel. And I know you've talked about some of the interfaith, some of the interfaith sites. Something, a lovely story from Israel that maybe to leave our audience with. A lovely story from Israel. Um, I know I put you on the spot. Yeah, you did put me on the spot. Okay, so first of all, you need to know, okay, last May, all right, last May we had some uh, serious problems that were going on, especially um, lately social media has become a really, a real pusher mm. of... Um, of extremism, mm -hmm. all right. Not only in the U.S. Mm -hmm. with everything that's going on, not only in uh, I don't know so much about Australia. Well, at the moment, particularly during our election campaign, we have a lot of that. A well. lot of social media yeah, incitement, yeah, inciting to okay, definitely. because we you know ten years ago it was not like mm -hmm. that. Now social media is a real effect. Okay, so last May in two thousand twenty-one, yeah, um, there were some there were some conflicts that happen every year during Ramadan, mm -hmm. but. Hamas took advantage of that and really pushed through social media the idea that that that, that violence has to start and mm -hmm. it did mm -hmm. okay and in the Galilee even kids um, um, Arab Israeli citizens young youngsters in the Galilee even they started to riot mm. and so we had a couple of days in the Galilee where some um, Arab they were citizens right Arab Arab youth incited by social media, went out to some, some uh, intersection, started burning tires and throwing mm. stones, okay? Which horrified all of us because mm. it had never happened. Mm. Actually, that's not true. The last time this happened was in the year 2000, there were some riots, okay? Mm. That's a long time, yeah. over 20 years of very peaceful shared living, right? Yeah. And interestingly, it happened for two nights, and then on the third night, Interestingly, the the parents of these youngsters, okay, decided that's it. We're not going to have any more of this. They went to the to the to the intersection, grabbed their kids by their ears, and pulled them home, <laughs> and immediately sent out word. I'm talking about my experience. Mm -hmm. I live in a kibbutz surrounded by Arab villages. Mm -hmm. They put out the word: Please, Jewish neighbors, come out, come to our homes. We want to make sure you understand that this was very strange and we're not going to let it happen again. Mm. And they invited us for coffee and we talked. And, and since May of last year, the shared existence has gotten even stronger because mm. both of the sides realized Jews that live there and Arabs that live there, Muslims and Bedouins and Druze and Christians, mm -hmm. we realized we cannot take this for granted. Mm. For 20 years it was great and we took it for granted. Mm. But something happened that sparked some violence and there is now a concerted effort to make things much better. And so we have gotten much closer just in the past year because of the two or three days of rioting that, that were there. And we decided that we're going to build more bridges mm. and um, build more friendships. And mm. that's a positive thing. Absolutely. It caused us to say, you know what, we cannot just take things for granted. We've got to work for peace. And we've been doing that. And it's, it's so much better. And that's an excellent segue to say how good, uh, how important interfaith dialogue is, and, it is. and, and speaking to people and, yes. and understanding them and inviting them to their homes and, and showing them that, uh, how things can work well together. Do not take it for granted mm. because, you know, once you take it for granted and you let it go, things can spark mm. uh, all kinds of misunderstandings and everything. So always continuous work of dialogue, of communication, of, of, of working together. Mm. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your stay. I know it's an emotional visit. So good it luck. Is. Good luck with your mission in Sydney. And can I tell you how much I love Melbourne? <laughs> I am so you don't have to tell impressed. Me. <laughs> I'm just, it's funny because I this morning I went with my cousin uh, and we took a long walk uh, in the central uh, business district. Mm -hmm. I was so impressed, and at the same time, not surprised. Somehow I knew that Melbourne was just going to blow my mind and it did but i'm not surprised i knew it was going to be wonderful and it has been thank you so for a first time visitor that's wonderful to hear thank you um and we hope you can come back as well i will and definitely. hopefully maybe even talk to our group in person yes uh, next time you're in, you're in town so thank you very much enjoy the rest of your visit 
Um, enjoy Sydney as well. Sydney is just as beautiful Sydney in a very different week. way. Yes. Um, in a very different way. Um, and thank you for joining us. Um, thank you very much. You are welcome. And, and thank, thank you, you for letting Thank you to our host uh, for hosting us. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll see you next time um, for CCJ Conversation Series. Thank you.